everyone welcome back so in this video we'll be adding uh, config uh, config in the private and public ip address so in the previous video we have created uh, this resource group and inside the resource group we have added the virtual network and relevant subnets and added the vms inside it and now we'll be adding uh, private and public ips uh, to these uh, vms so saying that let's jump into the video and after that we'll be creating a network uh, security groups so if i go to the resource group this is the one and uh, so these are the all resources that has been uploaded using that particular template and here specifically we'll be going to the virtual network so if i go down you can see there is a virtual network so click that and under the virtual network you can see there is a connected uh, devices click that and here you can see there is uh, interface one uh, interface zero and one according to this uh, architecture you can see zero and one so now we have to attach uh, to this particular uh, public apps so if i go back so let me click the first one which is uh, zero and here let me go to the ip configurations and just verify that it's dynamic yes it is dynamic so then click ip config and here you have to associate so initially it will be disassociate but uh, since i've already done this lab so i kept it as associate and make sure you add the public ip address initially it is not there so i have added it so if if that is not there you just need to click create and add the name here so according to the docs it's this one and you can also verify with the architecture too you can see the name is this one which we already kept here since it is already there we are uh, popping up the error so that is now and make sure it's standard one and click ok so once it is done just save it it will take like a few minutes once it is done we have to do the same process uh, for uh, the other uh, interface so if i go back here there is other one which is this and go to the ip configurations and under ip configurations make sure that it's dynamic yes it is and next if you click the config one it's associated and uh, here the name would be according to the architecture this is the one and uh, how we will be getting error since it's already there so let me so coming to the SKUs make sure it's standard and click OK so it is done so once you have completed it you can verify with the VMs so we have uh, also have private or oh, sorry public IP it's done and we also have the private so if we go back to the other one you can verify with that too which is vm1 it's the one and uh, it's the one so if i go back here so now we have completed with the first uh, i mean the third task which is configuring of private and public ips so the next one would be configuring of network security groups so before that let's go ahead and connect with vm zero so if i go back to the vm zero let's connect with it using rdp so let me download the file i guess no this is not the one okay if i go back here so i just don't remember the password so i open that okay for that parameters yeah so it's downloaded connect <clears throat> so here we'll be using the student and uh, the password which is there in the template and this ARM template so nice we have got an error computer uh, can't connect to the remote computer actions remote server 
is not remote access to the server is not enabled the remote computer is turned off the remote uh, computer is not available on the network so you can see we have caught another so there is a rule which is stopping so we have to create a network uh, security group uh, which will allow this so for that let's click ok and let's go back so it will be similar case with the both the ones uh, 0 and 1 so right now let's stop this VM0 and uh, let me go to the VM1 and stop these two so right now we have stopped these two virtual machines and uh, the next one would be go to the network security groups and create it so if I go here let's search for network security groups NSGs and uh, let's add the rules here so right now we don't have any so create one and appropriate subscription and appropriate resource group and coming to the name let me add this NSG name so it's done and so the rule has been created you can add the tags if you want in this case I'm not doing it so the validation is passed you can click create so everything is going properly as of now so the deployment is in process so coming to the security groups well it's done so the definition of NSG is the network security groups in Azure is a way to activate a rule or access control list ACL which will allow or deny the network traffic to use virtual uh, machine instances in the virtual network so saying that let's go to the resources here it's been done so if I go to the resources this is the one that has been created and uh, now if we go for the settings under uh, here we can check the inbound rules so if you click that so these are the default inbound rules now we have to create uh, the new one so click add any and source any and destination any service let's see if there is RTP yeah oh it's in brief okay there is RTP and uh, coming to the priority so it will be allow and uh, you can keep anything but uh, I'm following the box I'm just keeping it 300 and uh, coming to the name it's allow RTP inbound so click that and you can add the description if you want but in this case I'm just leaving it and uh, so I'm adding this now so it is done and uh, here under settings if we check the network interfaces it is not uh, associated with any so let's click associate and let's add the interface so let's add the first one okay So according to the box, like both should be to the same one, which is this one. So I'm, so we have to add both associate. And now it's number one. Click OK. So we have associated with those. So basically, if we talk about inbound and outbound rules that we have created. So basically inbound firewall rules protect the network against the incoming traffic such as disallowed uh, connections malware and denial service uh, DOS attack which is denial of service and coming to the outbound so it's a rules protects against outbound traffic originating inside the network 
so we have associated these two networks and now let's try to connect with RDP so if I go back where is go back go back VM0 and now let's start this and start the other VM2 which is uh, VM1 done so if I go back to the VM0 starting right yeah so now let's go to the connect and connection is disabled because it's disallocated let's wait for some time because everything is in process let's refresh the whole page and if I go here yeah it has been started so if I go to the connect so let's download the file okay so now you can see we were able to connect click yes there you go so we were successfully we were able to connect uh, using the RDP so well it takes some time to come yeah so it's already deployed so this is how we need to configure this and coming to the private and public IPs which we have used before so coming to the private IP address of the system so it is used to communicate within the same network so using the private IP data or information can be sent or received within the same network on the other hand if you talk about the public IP so it is used to communicate outside the network that is uh, the difference between these two so saying that we have successfully done with the task 4 and uh, sorry task 3 and 4 which is uh, configuring of private and public IP of uh, Azure VM and the second one would be configuration of uh, network security groups which is NSGs so we have successfully completed this and the next one would be task 4 and task 5 so yeah i hope you guys have understood the concept so if you like the video please click the like button below and if you're not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel and please share the video thank you